Hey everyone, Derail here, coming to you from my kitchen, about to cook some breakfast up. I got a question for you as we begin today's devotion. How do you like your eggs? Everyone is different when it comes to how they like their eggs, it seems like. Some people like them scrambled, right? Other people like them over easy, like me, I, I like them over easy. Some people like them hard boiled. And some people, they, they just like them raw. Right? Like in the movie Rocky where he's just cracking eggs in a cup and he's just drinking it. I don't recommend that way. But you know, how we process fear when it cracks open over our life is, is similar. Everybody has a different reaction when it comes to anxiety and fear in their life. Some embrace it. Some just see it and they just, I'm going to embrace that fear. I'm going to take it straight on. Others, well, they, they run from it. And then some people, they let it paralyze them to the, to the point where they just can't live their life. In today's Devo, we're going to be in a story where fear played a huge role in how the disciples acted. So what I want you to do right now is to prepare to open God's Word. Go ahead and pause the video here. I want you to pray, and I want you to read Matthew 14, 22-32. I'm going to finish cooking breakfast here, and I'll catch back up with you here in a minute. Well, I hope you got the chance to read over that story. You know, there's a lot we could touch on in this story, but there are two things I wanted to highlight. The first thing is, did you see how they feared what they didn't understand? They've been battling the storm for a while, and Stack Scripture says for, for almost the whole night. And then all of a sudden they see Jesus walking on water, and they think it's a ghost, and it freaks them out. I'd be freaked out too. See, our lack of understanding can do that to us. It can freak us out, right? For example, everyone is saying something different about this virus and our circumstances. How long might we be in quarantine for? How can I get the virus? Should I get tested? What happens if my parents don't find a job when all this stuff is over? What about school? Am I done for the year? Will I see my friends ever again? Uncertainty can lead us to anxiety, to worry, to fear. But our faith can lead us to freedom. Did you notice that even though they were freaked out, Jesus was right there with them? It reminds me of Psalm 23, 4, which says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. At times where we fear, at times when we have anxiety, we must trust that he is right there telling us to take heart. It is I. Don't be afraid. The second thing I wanted to point out was how patient Jesus was with them, especially with Peter. Jesus just got done telling them, it's I. Don't be afraid. But the next thing that Peter does is what? He says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you. It's a wonder that Jesus didn't say, didn't I just tell you it was me? What, what's the problem here? Now you're going to challenge me? But Jesus plays along. And then when Peter is out on the water, Peter becomes afraid and he begins to sink. Peter knew what Jesus was capable of. And, and we know what God is capable of. I mean, I think if we're honest, we know that God is bigger than the fears that we have. We know that he already conquered death. We know that he is bigger than a virus, but our sinful nature causes us to sink into fear and worry when we see outside circumstances. Thankfully, though, Jesus is patient with us. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Listen, if you have anxiety and fear as a believer, it doesn't make you a failure. Our God is patient with us and doesn't give up on us and doesn't stop inviting us to trust Him. So keep going. Keep coming back to Him. Don't let your anxiety and fear stop you. The story ends with Jesus saving Peter. Jesus calming the storm and the disciples worshiping Him, saying He truly is the Son of God. You know what I found interesting, though, is that even uh, though they worship Him, they don't do it till after the storm is calmed. And I wonder if that'll be us. Will we wait till the storm is past to worship Him and trust Him? Or will we praise Him during the storm, saying, God, I know that my life seems out of sorts right now. I'm scared. 
but I know that spirit isn't from you. Because when I accepted you to be my Lord and my Savior, you didn't give me a spirit of fear as it says in 1 Timothy. You gave me your spirit, one of power and of love and of a sound mind. Listen, I love you all, and I hope that as you study this passage further, the, 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 the more that you will see how, how the love of God has for his people and how he doesn't want our anxiety about the world around us to stop us from coming to him.